we are going to create our bower.json file and our gulp.json file to associate our client-side dependencies in our ASP.NET Core application. So I'm going to go over here to my course project. I'm going to right-click it, and I'm going to click Add New Item. And then I'm going to go over to my client side, and I'm going to associate the gulp file. So we'll go over here, and we'll look at gulp configuration file. And once we do that, we'll click Add, and it's going to generate a gulp file for us. So I already have my gulp file copied. I'm going to go ahead and copy in my gulp file so you don't have to watch me type all this. So I'm going to right-click it, and I'm going to click Paste. And this is my gulp file. So I already have all the settings associated with gulp. I'm using strict. I'm putting a variable gulp that's requiring gulp, rimraf, gulp concatenate, and gulp CSS min, and uglify. And then I'm associating the path to where my gulp file is going to be associated with when it actually compiles and minifies my CSS and JavaScript. I'm going to the www root folder. I'm associating the paths to the www root folder and it's associating to the different CSS files, JavaScript files, and the different minified versions. And then I'm associating the gulp tasks with clean.js and clean.css. RimRaf is associated with deleting files. I'm also associating tasks to minifying my JavaScript, minifying my CSS, and associating those tasks to run once I associate my NPM modules to associate with my gulp file. And what you'll do is you'll see your gulp file right here. You'll right click and you'll click Task Runner Explore. Right now there's no task found because we don't have our we do not have our package.json file to associate the dev dependencies for these different libraries in gulp. So what we'll do now is we'll go to course project, right click add new item and we're going to go right here to npm configuration file which is going to give us a package.json and then in our package.json it gives the version the name it's saying that it's private is set to true and this is where we will associate our dev dependencies for our package.json file so let's go here first and let's add gulp and once we do that, we're going to associate the version. We're going to do 3.9, which is the most stable version. And then we're going to associate gulp concat. And then we're going to put the version 2. And then we're going to put gulp CSS min. And then we're going to put gulp uglify. And we'll put that. So now we have all of our dev dependencies to associate. You'll see that right here on npm modules. And then it will pull all those items into the dependencies on the client side. So now we have associated our gulp file. Remember, Gulp is associated as a task runner, meaning that you use it to create minified versions of your CSS, your JavaScript, to concatenate files to associate, and also if you want to remove files in your application. One more I forgot to add here, we can also add the RimRaf. And right there. Now we're not going to use most of these. I just want to show you how to set up the client-side dev dependencies in your application. Remember in previous versions of ASP.NET applications, it had built-in JavaScript minification and CSS. We're handling it with client-side technologies in comparison to the server side. So this is how modern web development is going to separate the server and the client. So now that we have our gulp file associated right there, if we go back to our gulp file here, one thing you'll notice is that it's still saying no tasks are found. When we close this project, we will see all of this to be associated in our project. You know, sometimes it takes Visual Studio a little bit of time to pick up these different tasks. So if you're seeing this at the bottom here, close out your project and open it back up, it should run the task fine. Now that we have our gulp file associated in our project, let's pull in Bower. And Bower is a management package that associates the different client side frameworks we want to use in our project. So let's go to our course project. Let's right click. Let's click Add New Item. Let's go to Bower Configuration File. It's going to pull in Bower.json. And right there, we have our Bower file right there. If you see Bower.json, 
And then you'll see right here a .bout.rec file. This is associating where the client-side libraries are going to be built once we generate the different dependencies that we want. So you'll locate in your www root folder once we pull in some dependencies in the lib folder, which is associated with the libraries. This is where our client-side frameworks will be associated. So now let's go to our bower.json and let's pull in a few libraries that we want to associate in this project that we will utilize. The first one we're going to associate is a bootstrap file. And then we're going to pull in the different bootstrap framework versions that we want. So we're going to go with the latest stable version. At a later time, you can update these to later versions. Right now, we're just pulling in this one. So let's go there. And now we have bootstrap. Let's pull in jQuery. And let's go with the latest stable version of jQuery. And as you can see right here, the dependencies are being built and pulled into our Bower package. So we have Bootstrap right there. We have jQuery. And in our www root folder, we have our Bootstrap folder and we have our jQuery folder. So it's pulling in the different dependency libraries that we want to use in our application. And you'll see in the distill file, we have our jQuery and in the Bootstrap, we have the CSS and we have the JavaScript. So now let's pull in a few more. We're going to associate here jQuery validation. And we're going to go with the latest stable version. Finally, we're going to pull in jQuery validation unobtrusive. Let's pull in the latest version. You'll see it build right when we save this. You see our dependencies being pulled in right there. And now we have jQuery validation and jQuery validation unobtrusive. We go to our www root folder and we have these different library dependencies in our project, as you can see right here. So now we've built our gulp file. We've associated a package.json to pull in the different gulp dependencies. We've installed Bower and Bower associates our different client-side frameworks that we want to pull into our ASP.NET Core application. And we've also built in the Bower rec to associate where we want our client-side libraries to be installed. By default, it's going to be associated in the www root folder slash lib that associates the client-side libraries that we want to put in our ASP.NET Core application. Remember putting in the www root folder, it allows those files to be accessed when an HTTP request is made. Remember by default, everything outside of the www root folder in an ASP.NET Core application is blacklisted. I want to thank you for joining me in this lecture.